If you don't know Alan Hughes, man, he directed Brendan's Got a Baby. If my homies Eli, call. If my homies, homies call. call. I yeah. mean, let's be clear. We're not talking about some Rudy Poo dude, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, uh, he did uh, the Dear Mama joint on the FX joint, man, was heavy. You know what I'm saying? So this is a guy who knows Pac. You know, let's be clear. This ain't some dude like that did the clothing line mm -hmm. for the Pac estate, man. It just put some little crap over there. You know what I'm saying? It's somebody <laughs> real. But again, he said something that was a little off put, man, if you're a Pac fan, man. I got some video. I just want to play it real quick. Fair use. And then get your response real quick. DJ Scandalous. In a murder trial and where he comes from in Long Beach and the work he put in and the work that got put in on him and his homeboys, most of them who aren't here, he absolutely understands the gravity of the moment, that he can feel it. He knows what it is because he's a street cat. Tupac, on the other hand, while he came up in the inner city or the urban fucked up ghetto, he's not a street kid. He's an artist and an activist, and he's a performing arts kid, and he's delusional. He's just delusional. And I don't, I don't, and I mean that, again, I think not just in the pejorative way, in the positive way, you have to be delusional to be a great artist, but you should know when to hit that switch. I, I just didn't, I think he lost, um, the lights went out where the switch was. He could not find that switch. What's your thoughts on this, Scandalous, man? So again, like, this is Hollywood, you know, staple, man. Alan Hughes, man, basically saying Pac is delusional. Do you agree with that? Yes or no, man? What's your thoughts on well, that? Well, first and foremost, I'm just going to say the Hulu series by this guy was phenomenal. It's something that all Tupac fans, hardcore fans, and new fans really wanted because we really wanted to see extended footage from his music videos, all these archive interviews and stuff. And when he was on a TV show that, like, really no one really knew about until that came out. He did a lot yeah. of good for the Tupac fandom because there was a lot of information in there, a lot of footage that we've been dying to see for the last 25 years. And it's kind of yeah. a travesty that we haven't got all that footage on a DVD or anything. Right. So I'll give him his props for that. However, he's basically throwing shade at like every curve that you can with in regard to Tupac. And it's a shame because he put so much effort in that series. It seemed like he was trying to turn the corner and get back to the Tupac fans. But yeah. then he talks about... Tupac was delusional and playing a character. And that's something like everyone always says that Tupac's playing a character, but they don't really understand that this kid, well, I'm gonna say kid, because when he was young, he right. was like four or five years old. And this is in his own show. Tupac was on the step of his house watching out for the FBI because they were going after the Black Panthers. This mm. guy was raised in the struggle. He was raised in poverty. He was raised on a, a mattress on the floor. Tupac would get bullied at school for the clothes that he used to wear and stuff. So like to say that he's playing a character and he don't understand the lifestyle that he's talking about, it's a fucking lie. I'm not gonna sit here and step back and you know, give this man his props he did a TV show on Tupac. This guy has been trying to destroy Tupac his whole life. When Tupac was here, this guy sued Tupac and put him in prison. For the last 30 years, he's been throwing shade. Now, I can understand maybe like after 30 years, maybe you feel differently about the situation. Like even 50-year-old okay. Tupac will not be acting the same way as 25-year-old Tupac, right? He'll be nice. more professional. He'll be handling his business in movies and stuff. So things in the past, even beef with Biggie, I think they would have reconciled and maybe just music together by now. But, however, I don't think Tupac would appreciate this man going over Vlad and everywhere else, still talking trash about him. And then you're the Tupac estate doing a series with this guy. Like, the only really thing that this guy has done since 2010 is the Departed movie and that docu-series on Dr. Dre. I don't think that warrants enough to handle Tupac's legacy. And I'm damn tired of all these fucking people coming in Tupac's legacy that shitted on him and that, you know, talk trash on him in the media. Now they want to milk him like a fucking cow when it's me, DJ Scandalous, and all these other Tupac DJs that have been here since day one holding it oh, down. shit, man. Yeah. What incentive does he even have to keep on slandering Pac's name right now? Again, we saw him at the Hollywood star unveiling, and he was like, yeah, we got a star now, so now we can go in and do all this other stuff. What do you think is the plan that they have because again they've been tying these two together for some reason yeah now well let me get to the history so tupac was doing tupac less now and he wanted somebody to do their movies so okay. he found out about alan hughes and alan hughes and his brother were basically nobodies right so tupac put them on to do brenda's got a baby and if my homie's called the only reason that they're even known is because of tupac and then Tupac was doing Juice, and then Alan Hughes was doing Menace of Society. And the only reason that movie got green light is because they were required to get a 
a list or B list like celebrity or rapper in that Tupac already had Brenda's got a baby and trapped out. He was already right. in the news yeah. for all his political stances and shit like that. His album being removed off the shelf and shit like that. So he was very popular since day one. And he also had same song with digital underground, giving him the nod. So the only reason that Mendes society got off the ground is because Tupac decided that he wanted to be a character in that film. And it was much discrepancy over Tupac's character because he, apparently he was supposed to play a Muslim gangster and Tupac felt like you got to show more of his backstory so the viewers can understand why this guy was a Muslim and he turned into a gangster because that's very much against their religion. And even now, Alan Hughes says that he looks back on it, he should have did that. But back then, like Alan Hughes and Tupac would get into heated arguments when reading the script and that led to Alan Hughes firing Tupac. And then apparently there was like a... Uh, a film, a music video going down for Spice One. I think it's Trigger's Got No Heart. Yeah. And that's when Tupac and Thug Life rushed Alan Hughes. <laughs> Alan Hughes says 10 other dudes beat him up. Tupac says he beat him up. But the only guy he sued was Tupac. So you tell me, if 10 guys right. beat you up, why are you only suing the successful one? Iceberg, you can let me know your money. thoughts yeah, on that. Exactly, and then yeah, I'll, I'll exactly. roll back in. <laughs> no, I, I agree 100%. But again... Um, Again, Alan Houston, you know, Minister of Society, I mean, like, uh, he's done a lot of cult classics, man. Again, mm -hmm. he killed the Brenda Guy the Baby situation. When my homies call, like, when you think of Pac, you think of these, like, videos, man. Like, so we know the talent level's there. Somebody in the chat even said it. I think they're still holding on to some issues from the past. I think Gritty said that salute to Gritty in the building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll I go think back he's still, that. I think he's still holding on to some grudges, man. But again... I don't see why he's still slandering Pac's name when, to me, the more you praise him, the more you would make more money, the more you exactly. get more opportunities. So I don't understand why he's and doing And this that. guy should be grateful that Tupac put him on doing his music videos and for that movie because he's Fact. pretty much known for that movie now. Right. That's one of his best movies. It's called Classic, a hood classic, right? And Tupac gave him that. If Tupac did not sign on, that movie would not exist. So I can understand you get your ass whooped and you have some animosity even 10 years later. You know, I still hate some of the people I went to high school with and junior high school with, right? <laughs> right. I right. won't go to the bar and get a drink right. with them, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to go and try to fight with them. But, right. like, when you know someone as iconic as Tupac that gave you your big break, why are you still slandering this guy? And then you attach yourself to one of his life stories. And, like, I don't understand. There's so many other directors that could have did Dear Mama series and put out unreleased footage and stuff that would – could have been critically acclaimed like Antoine Fuqua wanted to do that right. All Eyes on Me movie before they wanted the other route. I know the docu-series with Dr. Dre was very successful and that's why they say like Afini Shakur reached out to him because maybe Afini Shakur felt like it's been so long he'll turn a new leaf and stuff but I don't understand like why would you still be talking about this guy and let's break down everything he has said about Tupac. So they got into a fight he says, even in the docu-series with Snoop Dogg, 10 other dudes whooped my ass. Tupac didn't whoop my ass, right? And right. Tupac says otherwise. And then there was one interview where he said, and this was a couple of years ago, after he was already put in a position to do the series, he said that Tupac's punches felt like Nerf balls. You tell me that's not a slight. <laughs> Come on now. A fact, yeah. And then yeah, he said, Tupac, he shaved his head. And why did he shave his head? Oh, because he got into a jealous rage around a juice premiere. I, I think it was before or after the juice premiere. He got in a jealous rage after talking to a female on the phone. And then he took a razor to his head. What does that tell you? Like he's trying to describe Tupac as emotional train wreck and a simp. You know, that's shade right there. And then it comes out in his own docuseries that Aunt Glow said that the reason why Tupac was bald is because that jaywalking incident where the police, you know, you see in the All Eyes on Me movie where they took his face and slammed it in the concrete and they dug into his hair. And that's why he had patches of hair. So he yeah. starts shaving his head. That's the real reason why he starts shaving his head. It's not because of Onyx. And, you know, people say, oh, he should start shaving his head uh, Onyx. Tupac yeah. was out before Onyx. Come on, he started shaving his head before Onyx. But, you know, that's the whole reason. So why are you going to slander this guy? Make up some lie that he took his razor to his head over a female. It just makes him look bad. And especially if you're doing a series like that, you don't want to highlight something like that. And with Tupac, you know, a lot of people say now, oh, well, Tupac, you know, he grew his hair back in prison. He didn't have alopecia. <laughs> well, if you have alopecia and you have ball spots, you're going to start cutting your hair and right. then you're going to keep cutting it because now it's your style. It's your fad. Everybody known by Tupac. Everybody if, knows you for that. If yeah. you shaved your head it's for five iconic. years, why are you going to go back to wearing hair? Facts. Yeah. Again, like I said, uh... We we had to deep we had to dive it a little bit deeper on this Allen Hughes thing, and we'll see what goes on. Because again, 
I also saw too that he did the defiant ones too with Jimmy yeah. Iovine and Drake. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with Drake. So yeah. again, there might be a reason why he's doing some of this stuff and all, and also having the vitriol that he's basically saying when he actually talks about these things. So it could be some other reasons why yeah. he's doing that. Now I wouldn't have minded him doing the series, but I feel like he owed a bigger apology to Tupac fans because he's been slandering him at every corner. He didn't right. come out and say, hey, Tupac fans, I'm sorry for this. I, I feel differently now that I started going through his material and stuff. And I think that would have been a better way to honor Tupac. You don't have to go and kiss his ass and everything, but we see people like Nas and people like Jay-Z that had beef with Tupac come out years later and show him his proper respect to flowers. Now, I don't expect anybody to ask his Tupac, but there was this one interview with Jay-Z and the guy's like, so Jay-Z, what do you think about Tupac? <laughs> and and Jay-Z was quick to correct this guy, you know, and maybe that was him trying to save face there, but he didn't have to do that. He could just went in and start talking about Tupac and he took, you know, the time to correct him and give a very positive outlook on what Tupac's life and his legacy. And Jay-Z we all know Jay-Z got like bombed on on the original hit him up. I think it bombed first and, you know, other unreleased Tupac songs. So there was a lot of beef there and he didn't have to do that. So why can't this guy take the same direction as these rappers if they had beef with them? I don't understand. Well, again, too, uh, it's salute to all the dialogue, man. Mo, Mo Preen was on there, uh, Pac's brother. He was saying they had just tons of enemies. Everybody was hating because they was the talk of the town. And again, this is before social media, before internet, and you knew everything that Pac was doing. He was heavy in the game. He was only on death row for what eight, ten months. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And getting that, getting that, getting that much love. So again, the hate is still there. It's still the bravado was still there in some of these guys. So again, it's not really necessary. And again, you're right. I think Allen does have, have to give an apology, man. Unfortunately, man, I think they're going to still tie a lot of stuff with Pac and him together, which is kind of weird. Yeah, which I don't understand why would you have this guy at the Hollywood Star Walk of Fame when there's other people that could have been there presenting it and everything. You know his history. I feel like Tupac would have been acting differently now. Maybe he'd be able to work together. Who knows? But he never got the chance. Nice. It's been 30 years, and this guy's still talking shit about him. I don't think a 25-year-old Tupac or a 50-year-old Tupac would take that shit. Facts. And also wow. in that article, he says that Tupac should have came out three years before what he did. Because in 1988, they're all about different types of political messaging. And he came right. out with Trapped and stuff. And then he says by 92, 93, he started ditching all that and trying to do Thug Life, which wasn't true because he still dropped Keep Your Head Up. He still had White Man's World come right. out in 96, yeah. everything yeah. they owe. He still had political songs. They feel like he just automatically just changed and became Bishop, you know, after that Juice movie. Now, nah, to me, like, Pac's always been multi layered And if you've actually listened to some of the uh, phone conversations that he had before he passed, he was basically talking about going to different cities, linking up with some of the guys and doing more ground root stuff, actually running for political offices as yeah. well. 